The New York Times recently hired Sir Jiang to sit on their editorial board. Ms. Jiang specializes in technology and legal reporting, and if one looks only at her resume, then the hiring decision makes some sense. She's been reporting on technology since before Gamergate, after all. Almost as soon as she was hired, though, social media posts that she made in the past were re-released, in which she repeatedly made prejudiced statements about white people. These posts are a few years old, but they were also extensive and venomous. And the latest battle of the culture war broke out. Why would the New York Times hire a known racist? The response which I have seen most often is that her posts were not racist, because prejudice against white people isn't racism. Calls for her immediate dismissal were met by a press release from the Times defending their decision and backing her. I really want to stay neutral about this, but I'm afraid I can't. When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. Racism. Noun. 1. Prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. Synonyms. Racial discrimination. Racialism. Racial prejudice slash bigotry. Xenophobia. Chauvinism. Bigotry. Bias. Intolerance. Antisemitism. Apartheid. 2. The belief that all members of each race possess characteristics or abilities specific to that race, especially so as to distinguish it as inferior or superior to another race or races. Thank you, Merriam-Webster, Incorporated. This isn't the definition of racism that some rather vocal people are using, though. In 1970, a new definition emerged. Pat Bidal based this new definition upon institutional racism and this definition became a stipulated definition in academic circles, and then popularized. This definition states that racism is prejudice plus power. In effect, in order to actually be racism, the prejudice must flow from a position of privilege. This definition is included in other dynamics of oppression which feature in the intersectional model which Bell Hooks created and has gained such momentum in the social justice community. Two definitions which are not entirely compatible exist then for racism, and under one, Ms. Jonk's posts cannot be racist. Hmm... Should I just accept that there are multiple definitions of racism, and thus accept that Ms. Jong has every right to say what she did without any consequences? By now, I would bet that my subscribers would know my answer to this question. Um... No. Just... No. First, we have to bear in mind that those who cite the prejudice plus power definition routinely claim that this is the only correct definition of racism based upon the fact that it has become a stipulative definition in academic circles. A stipulative definition is one accepted by the academic community in order to save hours of debate over which definition of a term will be used, and in this case the stipulation was made by members of the sociology discipline, the source of much of the cognitive dissonance now evident between highly credentialed intellectuals and the lay people who disagree with them. It's the same sort of cognitive dissonance that plagues many academic communities in their relations with the lay community particularly because so many lay people respond to academic pronouncements which make little sense by no longer stipulating that the academics who made those pronouncements are experts. In propaganda, there is a technique called framing. This is the application of a deliberate change in meaning in order to change perception, and the redefinition of a term is a classic example of framing. The prejudice plus power definition is much more recent than the dictionary definition of racism and changes the argument by changing the perception of racism. The argument that an academic stipulation makes a definition the only correct definition is logically false, and this makes the prejudice plus power definition suspect, so we will use the dictionary definition that was established in the 1930s. Using that definition, Ms. Jong's tweets were certainly racist. Can we prove this? Yes. 
apply the photonegative technique to her tweets. Would they be racist if another race is substituted for white? Yes, and we have evidence of this. Candace Owens substituted another race in a tweet that is otherwise verbatim quote of one of Sarah Jong's tweets and was banned for 12 hours by Twitter for, you guessed it, racism. The fact that Ms. Owens included an explanation of what she had done in her tweet had no apparent bearing on that decision. Now, I'm not really a fan of Ms. Owens, but her tweet proves that Ms. Jong's tweets were, by the dictionary definition that we must use, racist. That makes the hiring decision and the defense of said hiring decision by the New York Times a bad decision, in my opinion, and from the uproar on social media, I believe that I am not alone in that opinion. So, can I support free speech if I believe that the Times should rescind this hiring decision? Well, yeah, because this is a great example of something else which I have mentioned before. Free speech is not consequence free speech. Sarah Chiang has a constitutionally guaranteed right to say whatever she likes. The New York Times has the same constitutionally guaranteed right to their decision as this decision is symbolic speech. Their defense of that hiring decision is also constitutionally guaranteed freedom of the press. They can say what they want, make the choices that they want, and print what they want. However, the people, that is the rest of us, also enjoy the same First Amendment protections in our responses. Further, we tend to respond with another form of symbolic speech, namely our wallets. The time is already having difficulties with circulation. We know this because of the generalized decline of print media circulation, which coincides with the rise of the internet. We also know this because of the reductions in staff which even the mighty New York Times has been forced to make. So, I feel confident in saying that the Times will likely face further financial backlash from the public over this decision, and may come to regret the damage to their reputation. True, it may not have much impact on their print circulation, but the Times has, like so many other major news outlets, established an online circulation. Further, their articles are placed behind a paywall which limits access to five articles per month for non-subscribers. You can check this for yourself. Look up a Times article anonymously and you will see the paywall cookie. Hiring Ms. Jung is likely to hit the Times right in their balance sheet, and the evidence which I have seen suggests that the Times either doesn't realize this or doesn't care. That's a problem for them because the Times is owned by the New York Times Company, which is publicly traded. The editors at the Times have a duty to protect their bottom line because the executives at the New York Times Company have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders. A decision which can tank circulation can also tank the stock price. And if enough financial loss is created by this decision, then the shareholders can sue the New York Times Company for breach of fiduciary trust. That, my friends, is what I mean when I say that there is no such thing as consequence-free speech. The Times has to accept whatever happens as a response to their decision to hire Ms. Jong. The hiring decision was announced on August 1st, and as of August 5th, the after-hours stock price had dropped a total of 60 cents per share. That's not a significant change yet, but it could prove to be a very significant change, especially if the trend continues. And in my humble opinion, the evidence supports only one conclusion. Ms. Jong made several racist tweets in the past, and because of that, makes her new employers look bad. The New York Times editorial board would be well served to rescind their hiring decision in regards to Ms. Jong. And me making that statement is, of course, my exercise of my own constitutionally protected free speech. Now that's just my opinion, and you don't have to agree with me. In fact, I'd love to hear what you think, so go ahead and give me a like or dislike and comment below. If you like this content and want to see more, feel free to subscribe and make sure that you ring the notification bell. New episodes of Roasted Opinions post on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and Saturdays at noon, Central Time. Join me in the last Saturday of every month for my live stream with a special guest who joins me in the kitchen. New content is coming, so watch this space.